I always thought I was a privileged person. I had a kind husband and in-laws who cared for me as if I were their own daughter. Then when I had the child of my dreams, I knew that she would be loved by everyone. I didn't doubt anything, but... What have you done? Do you know what you've done? Don't give birth to that child. As soon as I told my mother-in-law, Mary, that I was pregnant, she looked like a young man and locked me in the doghouse in the yard. How could this happen? When I found out the truth and who was behind it, I couldn't stop shaking all over. My name is Amelia. I am a 32-year-old office worker. I met my husband Luke through a friend and we have been married for two years. Luke is a gentle man and I feel safe and relaxed with him. He is very protective of his parents. We often went to see them together to show them how well we were doing. His parents are also peaceful people. They loved me as if I were their own daughter. I never thought that I would be bullied by them. Until I got pregnant. After we got married, I finally had the baby I had always wanted. When I told Luke, he was happy with tears in his eyes. I'll have to let mom and dad know. They'll be so happy. I thought it was a little too early to tell them. But then I thought that I might get sick or something and might need them to help me. Luke and I visited them on the weekend. We enjoyed dinner as usual. Luke told his parents that I was pregnant when after dinner. Mary seemed to have noticed that I didn't drink alcohol. I knew it. Congratulations. I'm really happy for you, Amelia. You need to take care of your body now. She was so happy. My father-in-law, Kevin, who was sitting next to her, also looked surprised. I am surprised. You're pregnant. It seemed like he didn't know what to say. I was so relieved and we decided to stay at their house for the rest of the day. When I returned to the living room after taking a bath, the room that had been lively just a few minutes ago was quiet as if there was a funeral. What? What's going on? Did they get news of someone's misfortune? A thank you for letting me take a bath. Is something wrong? I asked fearfully, and Mary, who's normally kind, made a face like an ogre and glared at me. How dare you! Do you know what you've done? Don't give birth to a child like that! She grabbed me by the arm and opened the window to the garden. We were both barefoot as I was led out into the garden. The gravel in the garden stung my feet and it hurt so much. Wait a minute, Mary. What are you talking about? You're hurting me. I screamed, but she ignored me. This place is good enough for a dirty woman like you. She said that and locked me up in a room that was filled with the smell of dog. It was the doghouse of Simba, the golden retriever, who died six months ago. Kevin, who was very good with his hands, built it himself. It was such a big doghouse. Kevin had installed an air conditioner for Simba. It was spacious enough to accommodate more than one person. But there are no windows, only a door, and the lock is only on the outside. Please open it! Luke! Luke, I know you're in there! Get me out of here and help me! My voice must have reached him. I heard his voice from close by. Amelia, not going to forgive you. I'm leaving. Cool your head there. I couldn't stop crying at these unbelievable words from him. Just a few moments ago, we were all laughing and talking about the birth of our unborn child. What is this? What did I do? After a while, I heard a car leaving. Luke had really left. When I strained my ears, I could hear Mary yelling from inside the house, though I couldn't understand what she was saying. I also heard Kevin's voice trying to calm her down. I didn't sleep a wink that day and spent the rest of the night crying in the doghouse. The next morning, when I was in a daze from lack of sleep, the door opened. I saw Mary standing there, staring at me, just as she had yesterday. Do you need to go to the bathroom? She asked me. Mary, please, this is some kind of a misunderstanding. Please let me out of here, we need to talk. I know she can hear me, but she put the plate she was holding roughly on the floor, locked the door silently, and went away again. I looked closely at the plate and found one piece of bread on the silver plate that Simba used to use. Even though the plate has been cleaned up after Simba's death, it's not easy to get rid of the smell. I don't dislike dogs, but 
I couldn't bring myself to eat in this space, so I didn't touch it. Periodically, Mary would appear and ask me from outside if I need to go to the bathroom. When I tried to talk to her, she didn't seem to want to talk to me and quickly went inside the house. Lunch and dinner also came on Simba's plate, just like in the morning. I knew I had to nourish my baby. I ate my dinner with my hand where it didn't touch the plate. I was miserable and sad and made me cry again. I went outside for the first time since I was locked in the house to use the bathroom at night. I noticed that Luke's car was there. Luke is here? I asked Mary. Luke is a poor little boy because he married a woman like you. Mary's words still made no sense to me, but I hurried into the house. Don't come inside with your dirty feet! Mary shouted from behind, but I didn't care. I went into the living room and found Luke and Kevin. Luke, thank God. Can we go home now? I said that to him, but he remained silent. Kevin, please tell Mary to stop doing this to me. Please let me go home, I beg you. Then Kevin looked a little annoyed and said, I'm sorry, Amelia. When Mary becomes like that, there's nothing I can do to stop her. It's almost over, so just bear with it until then. And then Luke said, Get back in the shed. You're filthy, you know that? He suddenly yelled out. He grabbed me by the arm and forced me to go to the bathroom. When I got out, he pulled my arm hard again and took me to the shed. Don't worry. I called your office and told them you were sick and would be out of work for a while. Frankly, I didn't care about that. This whole family is crazy. All I could think about was how to get out of here. You keep screaming so loud. I heard the neighbors yelling from somewhere. Mary came out to the yard. That's enough. Be quiet. She yelled at me. That's my line. I had to fight back. It's your fault. You betrayed our family. I treated you so well. You're terrible. I could hear Mary sobbing outside, but I was the one who wanted to cry. The next morning, she glared at me again and then put the plate on the floor with a mighty thud. More hungry than sick, I picked up a piece of bread and bit it into it with all my might. This is for my baby. Hmm? I noticed something at the bottom of the plate. Is this a credit card? It was indeed a credit card. It was Kevin's credit card with a sticky note on the back. He must have slipped it under the bread. Order something with this, the sticky note said. Order something? Huh. Kevin was a crafty man, but a bit stupid. Mary used to make fun of him and tell me how cute he was. Luke took my phone home with him, along with my bag. What am I supposed to do with one card like this? In addition, there was no way I could use a card in my father-in-law's name. Then, around noon, an unexpected visitor showed up. I heard Mary's voice arguing with someone. Is someone there? I heard an unfamiliar voice. I quickly responded. I'm here! Please help me! When the door opened, there was an unfamiliar man standing there. I knew there was someone in here. Are you guys crazy? He glared at Mary and Kevin, who were standing behind him. The man was the man who lived across the street. He had often heard yelling and arguing in the yard. He was worried and came to see what was going on. I was taken straight to the man's house and his wife, who was at home, said to me, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. She hugged me. I smell so bad. I started to cry. Mary and Kevin didn't come after me. I borrowed a phone and asked my mother to pick me up. And by the way, I don't have a father. He died in an accident before I could remember. When I told my mom what had happened, she was very angry. When she came to pick me up, she was about to yell at my in-laws. I didn't want anything to happen to my mom, so we chose to leave immediately. I went straight to the police, but I had no proof. The couple across the street said they would testify at any time, but who knows. I left the police station and went to the lawyer's office. I wanted to divorce that man right away. But a few days later, I couldn't believe my ears when I heard from the lawyer. What? Me? Why should I pay alimony? No way, I thought. But the lawyer told me that this case was caused by my cheating in the first place. He also said that 
they only wanted to discuss it directly with me, and that they had proof. Of course I never cheated on Luke. We accepted the offer. We set up a meeting with a lawyer. On the day of the meeting, Mary and Luke were staring at me. Kevin looked at me with concern. I hear I'm having an affair with whom in the world? Mary's face turned bright red at my words. I know you're messing with my husband. Her voice was loud enough to echo through the room, but the content of it startled me. What? Luke continued, spreading the pictures all over the desk. Look at uh, this. It's you and my dad, no matter how you look at it. My mom and I picked up one photo at a time and looked at it. Sure, the faces are mine and Kevin's, but the bodies belong to different people. Some of the photos clearly show the wrong height difference. And then Luke took out his phone and started playing some kind of sound. I love you, Kevin. It was unmistakably my voice, but I don't remember saying a word about it. Luke and Mary looked so proud of themselves, but I really thought they were idiots. Then my lawyer said, This is a composite photo, isn't it? Also, isn't the audio also processed and made up? I'm sure we'll find out as soon as we get it to the lab. Well, I think anyone would find it odd even if we didn't. When I pointed out the height difference, which even I noticed, the color of Luke and Mary's faces began to deteriorate a little. At the same time, they turned their attention to someone else. Dad, what's going on? You're telling me that these pictures and the audio you gave me were all a lie? Then that story about my baby's father being you was a lie too? Luke's voice rang out in impatience. Kevin turned his head to the side. I love Amelia, Kevin said. These unexpected words gave me goosebumps. It turns out that after I went to the bathroom that day, Kevin brought these pictures from his room and started to tell Luke and Mary, actually, Amelia and I are in love. Kevin usually doesn't joke about stuff. So Luke and Mary believed it completely. By the way, both the pictures and the sound were made by Kevin. When I heard that he usually used them for his personal use, I couldn't stop shaking on the spot. As a result, Luke left me and went home because he didn't want to see me. Kevin wanted to divorce Mary and be with me. Mary did not want to divorce him. While I was locked in the doghouse, Kevin and Mary talked about divorce all the time. So when you said it would be over soon, I blurted out. I mean, Mary and I are getting divorced soon. Of course, you and Luke are splitting up, right? You always smile at me and I really love you. I want us to be together. I couldn't look directly at him, he was too creepy. Then my mom, who was sitting next to me, said, Hey, you old guy, I can't listen to you anymore. Do you realize how sickening you sound? Because she smiled at you? Huh? Of course she smiles at you because you're her husband's father. And you're just misunderstanding, you idiot. Kevin's face turned bright red after hearing her words. And you too. You guys are just as guilty for inflicting a lifetime of trauma on my daughter. Neither I nor Amelia will ever forgive you. My mom glared at them with all the hatred she could muster. Luke and Mary were completely disheartened and made me an unbelievable proposal. Amelia, I'm really sorry about what happened. Mom and I were so careless. Let's just forget all these and we'll start over, okay? I mean, a child needs a father, right? I don't know what kind of nerve he has. He must be kidding me. Yes, that's right. A child without a father is pitiful. A child needs both a father and a mother. Amelia, I'm really sorry that I lost my temper too. Can you forgive me? I mean, how could Amelia have feelings for an old guy like you? Here, you apologize to her too. Mary strongly urged Kevin to apologize to me after she looked at me with a goofy look on her face. That made me feel sick and nauseous. I got up from my seat and ran to the bathroom. Morning sickness? You don't want to be in a family like that, do you? I'm going to do my best from now on. I lightly rubbed my stomach and slapped both cheeks to cheer myself up. Sorry to keep you waiting. I won't change my mind. I'm divorcing you. It's the only way. 
And Kevin, I have no memory of my father. I loved you like a father, but no more, no less. Now I never want to see your face again. Kevin looked down in disappointment, and I talked calmly. Luke, don't you think this child would be more pitiful with a father like you? I feel so bad for her, thinking about what she might have seen from my belly. Mary, do you feel sorry for a child who doesn't have a father? That's how you thought about me all this time? It's none of your business. I have such a strong and dependable mother. I don't know if they had any words to reply, but they all became completely silent. After that, we talked about child support and property division, and everything went in my favor. Mary revealed her true nature. Of course, we have custody of the child, don't we? We're financially well off, and I'll take responsibility and raise the child. What she said didn't make any sense, so I ignored her. There's no way Luke can get custody of the child. They are forgetting the most important thing. After that, I took a leave of absence from my job to think only about my child. I moved back to my parents' house. It was not long after that I heard that my ex-family-in-law had been taken to the police. When the police asked me what had happened, I remembered something. Mary and Kevin were dog lovers and were so worried about Simba that they kept security cameras in the yard and the shed. I told the police about it, and when the police visited their house, they told me that the footage was perfectly preserved. And the couple across the street testified. Mary was blatant in her denial, but Kevin readily confessed to the crime. Luke knew about the confinement, but ignored it, so he was judged to have been involved in the confinement. As a result, my ex-family members were sentenced to prison. They sent me a letter, but I threw it away without reading it, because I will never forgive them, even if I read it. Mary and Luke may have acted that way because of what Kevin had told them, but that doesn't mean I'm going to rebuild my life with a bunch of crazy people who won't listen to me and lock me in a doghouse. I don't think I'll ever be more scared in my life. I went through a lot of hard times, but when I saw my daughter sleeping in my arms, I felt so happy that it didn't matter. According to the law, my daughter was born under my ex-husband's name. I filed a petition with the family court, and my daughter and I were safely given the same surname. By the way, I heard my ex-husband got out of jail first. None of my friends know where he went. He never paid child support. That's how lazy the man was. Whatever the reason was, sooner or later, we might have ended up divorced. I'm just happy that he's gone from my life. My mother holds my daughter, Grace, in her arms. I could look at her all day. She's so cute. Single mothers are not uncommon these days. You have me, and there are many people in this world. Amelia, you can raise your child in peace. I never see my mom raise her voice like that during our divorce proceedings. I'm so glad she was my mother. I vowed to be a strong mother myself.